Welcome to Healing Sound Movement Television. My name is John Konsemulder, your host and interviewer for this TV show. Uh, check HealingSoundMovement.com for our website and for our World Peace Child Project and World Peace Child TV, go to WorldPeaceChild.com. This is a very special day for me, for us. It's an honor and a privilege because the guest of today is His Holiness the 17th Karmapa Trinle Thaye Dorje, spiritual head of 800 or more monasteries and retreat centers all over the world for the Karma Kagyu School of Tibetan Buddhism. So I would like you um, to welcome His Holiness and thank you for this honor to speak with you. Pleasure. We are here in France right now. You see the beautiful temple in the back, one of the biggest retreat centers in Europe, am I right? Yes. And monasteries? Yes, we have monasteries here, uh, monasteries, retreat centers, and uh, of course many ecatetes or what is known as you know, centers basically here in France but in general all over the uh, Europe actually uh, around the world yes we have many centers okay yes now for the Western mind yes I know you also uh, teach to the Western people right. with their monkey mind <laughs> um, how would you explain <coughs> what self-realization mm. or enlightenment right. actually means mm. Um, I think we as human beings, we, no matter who we are, we always wish for some kind of freedom. Freedom from, it could be from anything. Freedom from, from hunger, from war, from f famine, from illness, from all kinds of difficult circumstances, you know. Mm -hmm. So enlightenment, maybe it's a little bit too far, but basically uh, it, the, the trend of that idea is to seek for some kind of, some sense of freedom. Mm. But we don't know what, what it is. It's, it's an always, uh, within the human history, it's, it has always been a challenge of finding the absolute uh, freedom. Yes. Long, uh, it's, it's been a long quest, but we don't know exactly what it is. Mm. So. Now, um, 2,500 years ago, then uh, a prince named uh, Siddhartha mm -hmm. uh, then to, took this again, this journey to find this freedom. Yes. So, I think in his search, he first tried, like everybody, try to find this freedom uh, on the basis of running away from the outer conditions, you know. The obstacles. Yeah outer conditions mm -hmm. yes and then he could see that there's simply no way of you know um, running away from them mm -hmm. so instead um, how do I say it I mean like basically he found his freedom by m by not f uh, not by focusing on the uh, outer projections outer conditions but inside towards one's or whatever we call it mind or consciousness mm -hmm. by focusing on that on its qualities yeah, on its innate qualities uh, not n not the uh, what it looks like qualities you know on the surface but going beyond that mm -hmm. and then r focusing on some innate qualities yes. that you're born with yes. such as compassion loving kindness so by focusing on that he actually found actual freedom mm. so uh, I think that's been translated as enlightenment but is it the pursuit of happiness or mm. is it far more than that because I have a feeling that right. happiness comes right. when you are in that state in that right. Buddhahood the pursuit of happiness is uh, is a general term but most in most cases is m is misunderstood yes because the uh, when we talk about happiness it's relating to, mostly it is related to the idea of sensations, yes. feelings. And from a Buddhist point of view, feelings, sensations, this kind of objective and subjective you know, uh, interactions, these, uh, and then the experience that you get, what is known as feelings and, and sensations, mm -hmm. the result, yes. 
these are uh, in Buddhist, from a Buddhist perspective, it is impermanent, mm -hmm. meaning it's changing. Not that it, it doesn't exist, but it's always changing. Yes. It has a changing nature. So therefore, Buddhist uh, path wouldn't be exactly a pursuit of happiness mm -hmm. in that sense. Yes. So, w but at the same time, one could say it's a pursuit of happiness in the, um, in the by pointing out that uh, that the, the happiness is not the uh, sensation happiness mm -hmm. or feeling happiness, but clarity of the mind. Yes. You know, a compassion that is beyond feeling, uh, a wisdom that is be, uh, beyond feeling or sensation. Mm -hmm. So, the in that case, it is <coughs> definitely a, in a pursuit of happiness. But if you say beyond yeah. all those examples, yeah. it feels to me um, a little bit like Dzogchen. Mm -hmm. But I know, of course, you are a great tantric master. Yeah. So maybe it's good for the Western mind to mm. explain those concepts. We don't have a whole year, right. but what are the major differences between Tantra, Sutra mm -hmm. and Dzogchen? Yes, that's yes, true. I think in a, f um, in a, in a, in a few minutes or, or hours, I think it will be quite difficult to explain but um, uh, nevertheless the thing that we ne really need to focus on is um, the, the, the very f basic Buddhist uh, topics that has been taught by Buddha in the first place mm -hmm. like the five skandhas five skandhas are I think translated as the five piles mm -hmm. or the five heaps Pungpo uh, so means sort of one thing sort of basically for for example, form. Uh, it is uh, a, a result of uh, piling uh, various types of forms and suddenly you have a form. Yes. So like that, there in Sanskrit I think it is known as skandhas. So um, in, in everyday re uh, life, we always perceive all kinds of forms. Mm -hmm. But, um, what do you call it? Mental forms mm -hmm. and physical forms. And um, I think just within that, uh, there are so many different types of forms that we perceive. Yes. And as we interact with them, you know, then we gain sensation, some sort of a feeling. Yes. And then most of us, uh, we somehow um, <coughs> carry our life forward. Uh, we, we judge things good and bad depending on how we feel. Yes. Yes. Dualism. Yeah, dualism, basically. Mm. <coughs> so in this case, uh, the I think the enlightenment I enlightenment or the enlightened path mm -hmm. is about basically trying to find a way to overcome it, but but not by negating it, you know, mm -hmm. letting them be as it is. Not grasping. Yes, if there is a condition for the feelings to rise, mm -hmm. it, w it will rise. Yes, but there is not much you can do. So instead, observe and let it be. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, then one gains peace. One gains clarity. And if one can maintain this process for, you know, undisturbed for a long time, mm -hmm. then there is uh, a way to reach enlightenment someday. Mm. You mentioned the word, uh, the word peace as well. Yes. Um, it's a troubled world if we mm -hmm. look at the news and right. we look at the TV. Right. Probably you don't, I'm not sure, <laughs> but maybe you do. Right. But it doesn't matter. But that's the outside world. Right. Is the solution to go... Um, inside mm -hmm. and reach enlightenment to your Buddhahood and radiate right. it outside because some people are saying we need revolution yes. and others say we need evolution yes. and one person I spoke to talked about involution I like that term so to go inside and mm -hmm. to radiate a better world outside right. what do you think would be necessary for world peace on a global level yes world peace um, I think everyone um, does hope for world peace, just like searching for freedom, you know, in the same way. Yes. But again, uh, if, if you have the aim wrong, then we will never find world peace. Mm -hmm. Like, in terms of what is wrong, uh, is that if we aim for a perfect world, you know, let's say like a pure land, let's say, mm -hmm. you know, it's perfect in every way. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Utopia. Yeah, utopia, yeah, that's right. I will never find. Mm -hmm. Because um, then it's sort of like 
it, it has to be constantly conditioned. Yes. So such energy cannot be kept. And if there's a slight mistake, then everything will, you know, fall. So I think world peace can be found by simply looking into ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, looking at our, uh, into, at our what is uh, known as imperfections or whatever, mm -hmm. and then focusing on that. Yes. And then see um, its nature. Yes. Do they, if it's an imperfe imperfection, do they really disturb us or not? Mm. Can, do they have any kind of ability to disturb us or not? Mm. If they do, then it's something, something yes. to worry. But if they don't, then then there is um, no need to have any concerns for that for them. Yes. And then one can just l let them go. Yes. Yeah. Then, if one has that kind of a, you know inner development of such such wisdom or such knowledge, mm. then if everyone can somehow achieve that, then I think that is as good as world peace. Yes. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Yes. Um, is this the same what you described mm. as uh, uh, consciousness? Because in science, I believe there's a little one coming. Oh, almost <laughs> in, the, in the picture. But um, in science, we have uh, well, the new science mm -hmm. is proving the work of intentions and visualizations, right. affirmations. Uh, the work of vocalizations, for instance, mantras. Um, so are these in your way um, affirming the essence of Buddhism or are they strengthening that concept? Or is it still the outworld of proving an inner process? You mean, uh, the new science, this, the science that, that shows that intentions mm -hmm. and thoughts and emotions and also visualizations like in Tantra. Right. So you become the deity and right. you can uh, empower something. Um, is that helping the truth that is found in Buddhism? Right. Right. Is it the same? <coughs> you never know. I mean, uh, these methods could be, uh, could be useful, mm -hmm. could be beneficial. Uh, as long as we have, um, we have great experience and knowledge and wisdom, almost it seems that one can apply almost any uh, means for a good cause. Mm. Like for example, if one is experienced enough, one can transform a poison into medicine. If one doesn't know, even a medicine can be turned into poison. With consciousness, with the mind? Yeah. Yeah. Well, of, of course, through one's uh, consciousness ability, yes. The practices. Yes. yes. Through one's uh, conscious skill, let's say. Yes. In Tantra, they have visualizations of yes. deities. Right. Um, so how important is that that we have to make a communication with deities that we can we become the deity or the energy of the deity how does it work right mm. how do I say this <coughs> I think many believe that um, in fact the practice uh, of um, within the tantric practices that by visualizing yourself or uh, visualizing someone um, you know, across you mm -hmm. and receiving blessings and then you yourself becoming that character and then and then this new character that you have somehow developed then um, manifesting different types of positive actions you know mm. Uh, these are all, I think, first, I it's, it's a way to develop our mental skill, I think. Mm. Yeah. But most importantly, the real essence of it is, is to show that actually it's, it's a way to, it's a very skillful way to dissolve, to dissolve the idea of dualism. Mm. Because, because all is one? Mm, or a different exactly. kind of concept? No, it's different. Uh, it's not as one, mm. but to show that everything is illusory. Mm. Yeah. Right now we have a s uh, what is known as well. This is just a Buddhist context, mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's you know one doesn't have to believe it. Uh, but uh, the Buddhist con uh, concept or theory is that through these methods of uh, visualizations, mm -hmm. uh, we will be able to focus on what is known as you know the, the illusory nature of things. Yes. Um, right now we have habits um, 
a very strong tendencies and habits to believe that everything is solid, everything is concrete, mm -hmm. everything is permanent. Yes. And uh, and then uh, lacking s s uh, certain ideas that actually things are changing. Mm -hmm. Now nowadays scientists and I think the science can prove that. Yes. On a certain level, they can prove it's dynamic and organic and exactly. changing. Yes. Yeah. Mm. But still, uh, that idea will uh, will always shift and jump. Mm. If they see that the body is by now no more imperma uh, no more solid, mm. then it will jump into something like let's say one's soul or one's mind. That is permanent, you know. Mm. So mm, that's why there's a big battle against this. Uh, eternalism. Yes. So, in order to somehow sort of um, dissolve that uh, illusion of eternalism, I think we, uh, we, we we meditate by first of all manifesting out of nowhere, and then s after some time dissolving into nowhere, mm. showing that everything is just an illusion. Everything manifests from nowhere. Mm. In other words, from emptiness, from the void, yeah. the emptiness, spaciousness, yeah. mm. from from selflessness, yes. and then f from there, anything can manifest, anything can rise. Mm. So I think this is the uh, point of the uh, Vajrayana or tantric practice. Yes. Yeah. So if everything is illusionary, as you say, yeah. do we live in a multi-dimensional holographic world? Are we being projected so how illusionary is it because it feels real right. but it's emptiness but it still feels real yes. even even if you look at it as, as a form of manifestation yeah. from yeah. emptiness so is it all projections mm -hmm. or is it a holographic reality how would you see that in uh, in buddhism from buddhism this reality is well, as it is mm -hmm. nothing more nothing less uh, there's nothing greater. Uh, there's the from a Buddhist perspective. There's nothing special about uh, about our experience, mm -hmm. but nothing also less about it. Mm. It it is just as it is, mm. you know. But on that ground, it can have many different perspectives, angles, different dimensions. Mm. For example, like um, um, in terms of um, like in my case, like uh, um, when I'm with my parents, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, I'm their son, you know, I'm no more uh, the, the, the person who's, uh, who's, um, I'm, I'm no more a teacher. Yes. Yes. And then if I'm with, uh, if I'm with my teacher, uh, I'll be a student. Yes. I'll be no more son and no more teacher. Yes. But when I'm teach teaching, I'm no more a student and no more, a, you know, a son mm -hmm. or a teacher, but still the same. Yes. So, 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 you know, um, with that kind of, uh, how to say, metaphor, one can see that uh, a, a person can have m many different personalities, one could say. Yes, sure. In different dimensions. Yes. Yeah. But that feels to me like an explanation of um, character and personality. Right. But in uh, Buddhahood and searching for enlightenment, right. it is sometimes said that they are looking for the ultimate reality, the right. ultimate nature of right. reality. So right. there is a, a philosophical school in Buddhism that is searching for, for the, or is it finding? Right. Is it not searching but finding? No, it's true, it's true. Yeah. Yes, there is. And uh, what they say is that in the end, what they really find is that they find nothing. Emptiness again. Yeah. Because, um, uh, and I think that, the, that is the answer. And then the, the way to go about it is, is that um, w one cannot um, separate the, the absolute and the relative. Mm. That in order to, to, to come to realize the absolute, one has to depend a lot on the relative truth. Mm. Yes. But is this the concept of Dzogchen or is it the concept of the whole Tibetan Buddhism? Because in Dzogchen it feels to me as if it is what it is, mm -hmm. and in Tantra and Sutra there's more of an effort of transforming mm -hmm. instead of just uh, the self-liberation of things. Right. Is this a difference that's there, or, mm, or is yeah. it just a conceptual Well, difference? Mahamudras and Dzogchen and, and Uma Chimbo, Awa Chimbo, like these are all uh, basically you know, saying the same thing, actually. Okay. Saying the same thing, but uh, different interpretation. Different uh, view and uh, path that's and different right. fruits, yes. as they say. 
fruit is more or less the same. Okay. Yeah, the path is different. Mm -hmm. The view is a little bit different, but the the, the result is always the same. Mm -hmm. Some critical Western thinkers, you know they're there, um, say if we have an inner Buddha, right. how come we need to activate it? How come it's not there already? In Dzogchen they say they, it is already there, but mm -hmm. in potentiality. Right. So do we need the practice? And can you explain to the Western people mm. why it's important to practice? It's important to practice initially, yes. But it's not like uh, we have to... Um, keep that uh, routine all the way. Mm -hmm. For example, when one is uh, fully accomplished in, in whatever we, wa we want to accomplish, once we are accomplished, we, uh, we don't need to um, practice anymore. Mm -hmm. Like for example, for a Buddha, let's say, mm -hmm. someone who has accomplished everything, doesn't need to uh, you know, repeat the same process again. So it's a means to an end. Yes. In, in that case, yes. 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 Okay. But then, of course, um, not necessarily a means to an end, mm -hmm. but then the result, the, the absolute result, uh, will benefit then all sentient beings. Mm -hmm. Meaning that uh, through the, um, what is known as the uh, aspiration, aspiration of, of, uh, of wanting to benefit all sentient beings, mm -hmm. It, uh, um, when when that is there, you know, in the beginning, then that particular stream of mind, when it reaches the perfect perfect enlightenment, mm. perfect enlightenment, then that aspiration is fully realized. So it's like a wish wish fulfilling jewel. Mm. Yeah. So it's doesn't really stop there. Mm. Then it's one could say always. Uh, just like a wish fulfilling jewel, like without beginning, without end, mm. it will always be there. You know, the activity will always be there to benefit. Yes. When you say all sentient beings, That's I've right. read in the book of Tenzin Lopo Namdak, I believe, a okay. Bonpo uh, teacher, an author. Mm -hmm. um, he talked about there are other beings in other worlds as well. That's so, right. uh, would you say they are like? Um, for instance, cutting the chair, as they say, right. you uh, face your own demons, your tulpas, right. your thought processes, right. or are they real beings like a rainbow uh, light body, for instance? Is it a, a, a different kind of being than us as human beings? Mm -hmm. Or are they thought forms in itself, like tulpas, or are they both? Well. Or like extraterrestrial beings, people right. talk about those beings as well. Uh, for example, just here in uh, in our own world, um, there are um, karmic beings, you know, mm -hmm. meaning that uh, uh, humans and animals um, uh, manifest or they are born due to their uh, previous uh, action. Mm -hmm. And then also um, they are um, like tulpa, you know, as you, as you said. Yes. You know, um, Having having born or manifested due to uh, due to the power of the mind, yes, yes, thought energy. Yeah. So this is also mm, mm, uh, this rule also uh, is also applied in, in various different uh, universes. So therefore, in, in, in other uni other universes, there are also human beings like us, mm. non-humans also like us, mm. animals, as well as uh, you know, tulbas also. Mm. Yes. So mm, it is said that uh, our Milky Way is m almost um, hosts uh, 999 billion uh, identical worlds, mm. and, w and we are one, we are one of them. We are invisible and yeah. very small. Yeah. Yes. So how would we know these these beings exist? I mean. We don't, well, maybe we do with anti-gravity spacecraft, but uh, probably it is the way to go inside through meditation, which mm -hmm. I believe is very important in uh, the Karma Kagyo lineage, am mm -hmm. I right? Mm -hmm. So uh, through meditation, can we reach those outer worlds as well and contact those beings? Sure. Yeah. Through um, enough s uh, s strength of Samadhi, one can reach uh, all sentient beings. Yes. There's only one thing. You, uh, bo you, you both have to have similar conditions. Some may not have, so therefore even though you may perceive them, they might not be able to perceive you. 
because you do not resonate on the same frequency or how do Something I? Something like that, one question. But of course, the yeah. the Buddhist term is uh, there is no uh, there is a lack of free, uh, there, there is a lack of free frequency of karma. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So resonance in Buddhism. Right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, like I said, we uh, in Dharamsala we do uh, we did our World Peace Child project with children. Mm -hmm. um, my question is, do you feel that the new children that mm -hmm. are born on this earth, this planet, right, right now, right. maybe with a soul? task or right. a cosmic contract, um, are they important to promote change and uh, beneficial actions throughout the whole world? What is your feeling of the children as change agents for a better world and a more sustainable world? Well, uh, when we say children, they are, of course, uh, or, uh, let's say youth, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, there, are, there are many different levels of, of, of youth. One is definitely the children, you know, the re really, really young ones. But overall, I think uh, they are uh, mm, they are our future. They are our future because mm, I believe that uh, we are li living in a very, actually, very exciting world. You know, where all information is available, uh, where where all kinds of um, material uh, luxury is there. Mm -hmm. And um, what was difficult uh, in the past century, such as traveling, learning things, keeping uh, in touch, connecting to uh, d different parts of the world, which was so difficult. But now, in it's this century, it's, it's everything is possible. Mm -hmm. So in that way, it's a very exciting time. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, uh, my feeling is that mm, uh, they need um, proper, I think, education. Education is one thing, which unfortunately now, nowadays the whole of uh, most of the civilizations, they offer, they offer it, you know, as, as much as they can, I think, mm. which is very, very good. And due to it, um, they know how to take care of the material aspect of the world. Mm. Although, yes, there are crises of natural disasters, even man-made man disasters, you know. But nevertheless, I think um, there is enough uh, sort of knowledge and experience and expertise on how to deal with those. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, from my point of view, um, there is there's one opportunity w uh, that sh should not be missed, which is that uh, I think focusing on the inner qualities of those mm. generation, the spiritual education. Yes, one could say spiritual, but maybe spiritual is maybe not widely accepted. Of course, but uh, it is right to, to uh, it is correct to, to say that there is an inner quality mm -hmm. in everyone. Yes, uh, which is uh, something that is that they are born with, you know, from the very beginning. So you you say you are saying that compassion, forgiveness, and yeah. love yeah. are inbuilt. Uh, capability, yes. so it's it's uh, it's hardwired, not aggression, duality, yeah, exactly. fight, struggle. Yeah, okay. no one has to teach that. Mm. If you see someone uh, sad, or if you see someone, who, uh, you know, uh, in in difficulty, everyone has that nature to uh, to feel f for them. Mm -hmm. Yes. So so in that way, uh, I think there is that opportunity um, for the youth, which needs to be really taken care nurtured and cultivated mm. this is very important i think if mm. if they have acquired these uh, these uh, qualities or knowledges mm. which is really a, a wealth of inner wealth you know yes so if they if they're able to capture uh, capture that nourish that then i think they are really they will be able to accomplish many many things that i think none of us could mm. in the future yes. because <coughs> Uh, m most of the time, it, it's always uh, wherever, um, in, in whatever society we are, we are in, whichever society we are in, uh, we always somehow manage to fall into very different types of you know, extremes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, therefore, we actually get nowhere, mm. you know. And like in, so in, in some past times, there was really a lack of education. Mm -hmm. And now there is. 
uh, a great education, but then the education is just sort of probably one-sided, maybe conditioned. Yeah, very conditioned. Mm. That it, it is aimed to to earn money, mm. to earn a good houses, to have a good car, to have a luxurious life, fame. That's it. Like we said when we just met, not to be, but to become. Right. We are studying to become, and they're, yeah. they're not allowed to just yeah. be. But do you have the feeling that there are new children coming on this planet? By which I mean, you of course yourself are a Tulku, uh, a reincarnated uh, person mm -hmm. who consciously reincarnates into a new lifetime. Could it be that there are children coming now that they have a special uh, aim uh, to change the world in a better place? Or is it the same? Is there a spiritual evolution going on? Right. Is it is it fascinating, or is it the same in all time cycles? Right. Spiritual evolution somehow goes in. I mean, uh, it's happening with I think everyone. Mm. Just sometimes we don't even know it. I think it's happening um, <coughs> when we have the best of lives, but we are not happy. Mm. We may have the most luxurious life, most comfortable life, but we feel that something's missing. That's when there's a evolution is going on. Mm. And we, then we realize that this is not everything. Then you start searching, you mean? Yeah. Yes. So in that way, I believe not just um, not just uh, the the young generation, but in this case, everybody. Mm. Yes. But the youth has that much more of a uh, potential, you know, mm. to make it make a change, make a difference. Although the world has already actually moved forward by a long way, yes, within the last ten, uh, within the last decade, it has changed so much. Yes, at the same time, it has uh, brought a lot of destructions. It has brought so many disasters and crises. Mm -hmm. But, but um, I don't think that was everything. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, if you, if you look at the positive side, uh, as I said before, you know. Now the world is so easy to uh, somehow. It's so easy for us to to, to connect to the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. The consciousness is growing. Yeah, yes. and consciousness is definitely growing, but s somehow we are at the verge of. We do know that we uh, uh, our, our consciousness uh, needs to rise, mm -hmm. but to which direction we don't know. Mm. I think we are, we are lost there. Yes, yeah. and is this the end of the Kali Yuga? And there's the new period of light coming after these some called dark ages? Well, in the prophecies says many things. They're not wrong for sure. But uh, that is a, as a whole, I think, mm. as a whole. Individually, it's, it's very different. Not necessarily it's, it's a Kali Yuk. Mm. For, um, for someone, it, it might be the, the, the best of times. Mm -hmm. yeah. The best of eras. We just became enlightened, by the way, very easy, but because of a star body called the sun. Yeah. But uh, talking about the sun, do you think uh, in Buddhism, mm -hmm. there's, uh, I know in the Bon tradition there is, but yeah. I'm not sure in all other schools, uh, the cosmoplanetary aspects, right. are those important? So um, I believe in hermetic philosophy they call it as above, so below, so within, so without, so that the cosmos is within us. Yes. Is this a concept that exists in Buddhism or is it different? Well, basically, uh, in, in like now when we talk about the Vajrayana aspect of the Buddhism, mm -hmm. actually it says that everything uh, is in the end um, a result of the of one's mind, one's consciousness. So the reason that that there that there is the world out there, such as the Earth, the Sun, the Moon, the stars, all of them are out there because of your mind if you don't have the mind none of these exist mm. so therefore actually um, uh, it says that uh, our uh, body our physical body uh, has all identical what you call structure of the cosmos mm. yeah so by meditating and uh, by focusing on particularly in our kajus uh, Traditions um, practice called the six yogas of Narupa. Yes, uh, we uh, we actually try to focus of uh, focus on these aspects, so that the inner the I the inner essence or the or the or the inner uh, the the inner part the inner cosmos one could say is in that uh, we try to manage that 
uh, with um, one could say with uh, peace and harmony. Mm-hmm. Yes, with well, actually the right word would be with wisdom and compassion. Yeah. And by doing so, then no matter what is happening um, out there, it doesn't affect because mm. innately we are at peace. Mm. We are the eye of the storm. Eye of the storm. Yes. Okay. I think. Is that a good expression? <laughs> a good metaphor? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Inside the hurricane it's quiet. Yes. The zero point. So actually if one has uh, if one gains that ability, one can even um, um, have um, what you call um, one can even manipulate the, the outer condition as well. Yeah. Because so everything is the mind. So you mean change perception? Yes. Change reality. Right. Go inward and change the outward world. Sure. So there's one deep question coming up if I can ask. Okay. Because if you say that, my monkey mind says, that's all fine, but how come we have a consensus reality? Because your thoughts and intentions and holographic projections outward into the world from your inner mind or whatever it comes from are different than mine, maybe. Mm -hmm. So still we think this is a table. These are flowers, mm -hmm. these are hidden microphone. So how can we have consensus reality, an agreement about well, how the, the world looks like? Right. That's normally known as uh, um, a cause that is th that we have a similar cause. Mm. Of course, uh, in, 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 a, in a conditional world, you have many different types of, of causes. Mm -hmm. uh, some, mm, so in, in this case, uh, our cause is that uh, uh, we have a cause to, to experience the same thing, experience the, the, the same reality. Mm. So due to that, all of us are able to share this, uh, this, this planet. Mm -hmm. All of us are able to uh, use the, this, the same, same language to, mm. to converse and understand things. Like a cosmic contract we both signed to experience? I guess. I'm, tr I'm trying to explain to the, right. to the Western mind, something right. like that? Or something like that, I suppose. Okay. So if some other people wrote, uh, signed different contracts, they have a different view mm -hmm. of the world and different experience, therefore. Yes. So does that mean that school, uh, that Earth is like a, a school to learn your cosmic lessons? Earth. Yes, this lifetime, life, this lifetime, life yeah. in general. Yes. Right, right. Sure, this, this lifetime is um, one, one, of the, one of the most um, rare and one of the most precious existence ever. Why? Because it's like, um, I don't know how to, how to say it, but first of all it's very rare. Of course, when we um, try to think of like uh, on the average of um, the growth of population, we, um, or one might think the, 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 uh, the opposite. Mm. That's a human growth, uh, that human, li a human existence is not that rare. Mm. But to have a human, human um, birth or human existence where we can learn things, where we have the time, where we have the space to, to understand all aspects of truth, nature, this is rare. Mm. Very, very rare. And short lived. It's very difficult to again. Uh, find that uh, same condition again. Mm. Yeah. Okay. We talked about the mind and the power of the mind, yes. but how important is it to live from the heart? Is that a central teaching in Buddhism or is it just too simply stated? No, I think this is uh, very important. Yes, we, we do talk about Vajrayana, we do talk about um, even magics, even Sure. About miracles, of course, mm -hmm. supernatural abilities, power, yes. power of the mind, yes. enlightenment. But in the end, uh, the whole of the whole practice and the teaching of Buddhism is really all about, in the end, becoming a very decent person, mm -hmm. yeah. a good, decent person. Meaning uh, that someone who has little desire and who is able to somehow appreciate um, whatever they have, mm. whatever conditions that there is to offer. Thankfulness. Yeah. I think that's, that's the aim. Mm. Yeah. Then, if you have that kind of a ground, 
then all wonderful things can grow from there. Mm. Even bodhicitta. Mm. But in Dzogchen, mm -hmm. I, of course I agree, but in Dzogchen they say that um, that everything is already there from the beginning, you don't have to transform like yeah. they do in Sutra and Tantra. Mm -hmm. um, then does it mean, because it, it, it sounds a little bit like uh, indifferent, mm -hmm. that you don't have to become a better human to have good conduct, because it, to the Western mind it might feel as if you don't have to do anything and all is fine. Mm -hmm. But I think this concept, I'm putting this too mm -hmm. simple, right? No, no, actually it's right. It's right? It's, it's, it's never wrong. It's just a different approach, like I said before. Yeah. Um, our approach is that it's the same thing. We do also ex uh, we, well, we we also acknowledge the mm -hmm. same thing that the enlightened nature is there. Yes. From the beginning. Yes. Yes. It's from the from is there from the beginning because it was never there. Yeah. No separateness. No, no. Because mm. it was never there. It was never there. There was never something solid there. Mm. Yeah. It was basically selfless. Mm. So that's why it can grow. If there was something, then uh, either it has to stay as it is, or, or it cannot grow, mm. or it is blocking something, you know. Yes. The, the thing is, that in truth, in every sentient being's nature, uh, there is Buddha nature, because uh, in, in fact there is no self. Mm. That's why it can grow, that's why it can finally reach enlightenment. Yeah. So. In that aspect, it's the same thing as what Dzogchen is saying. Yes. Yeah, same thing. Now I understand why your name means limitless, unchanging Buddha activity. It's also the same. <laughs> okay. I want to thank you for your time. Most welcome. It's an honor and a privilege. And um, uh, for the Western people and, of course, Tibetan people, or people all over the world, uh, my name is John Konzenmuller for Healing Sound Movement Television. Go to healingsoundmovement.com and check our World Peace Initiative with, for and through children, uh, worldpeacechild.com. Also movies with Tibetan children singing the song Pray for the Children in Tibetan on the, the website. But of course, first go to www.karmapa.org for more information. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I think they're having a wonderful time. <laughs> Oh, we have some background here. Yes. <laughs> They're consecrating your temple. Yes. <laughs>